first and foremost, I just quit smoking cigarettes, which is amazing. Oh. Yeah, no, and that's all good. That was like Thank God's yeah. worst. Yeah, that was like my only vice forever. And when I was younger, I drank a little bit when I was a teenager, like super slight, and I would smoke weed for a little while. But it was like so. I think it's because of my father's, you know, addiction to crack cocaine and my mother's addiction to alcoholism and uh, with alcoholism and uh, uh, you know painkillers and prescribed medicine, all that. Like I saw what it did. I saw it tear apart my family, and through that. You know, I think where other people would follow down that path, I kind of saw, you know what, that's what I should not necessarily be doing. So I, I just kind of kicked that out. I never wanted anything other than me to be able to stop me from doing what I wanted to do. I never wanted anything else to control me. And that's why, you know, I, I, it's crazy because, now, so spoiler alert, if you haven't heard my album and you don't know about the song Nikki, don't listen to what I'm about to say. Okay, but, uh, and then tune back. All right, so anyway. So Nikki is a song on the album, and throughout the entire album, I'll talk about Nikki, my relationship with her for 10 years, and like all this crazy shit. And then you get to the song, Nikki, and I love it when you're fresh, I love it when I take your top off and we share the same breath, and then you get to the hook, and I'm talking about nicotine. So it's like, wow. yeah, like writing a record from the perspective as if uh, as if it's a woman, or, and I'm dealing with a breakup, and you hear me talk about it throughout the whole album, and you're like, oh, who is this bitch, and da 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 And then you get to the song, and it's about, you know, the relationship, I, you know, it's basically saying things like, you're the only thing I let in that could put me in a grave. You know, I'm a king, you're my Coretta, but lately I've been feeling like a slave for the nicotine. So for Ooh. me, yeah, it's all about, yeah, and, yeah just, and I feel, and, you know, that was inspired by Kanye West's addiction about girls right. and weed and this and that, but I'm like, well, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't give a shit about, I mean, I love me, women, some women, right. but I got me a good woman, I'm not really worried about, right. so how could I do this in a way that it's not corny? And, um, you know, I think, I think I did it. You've been on overseas. I yes. saw that you got yeah. you got passport game, yeah, yeah, few stamps. Yeah. I've been through a couple. Um, you got this world tour coming up. Like, um, can you talk about it? Yeah. So I mean, it's very early. You know, the tickets aren't even up yet. Like, I, it's funny. They'll be sold out. Premiere right, right here. They'll be sold out because I haven't talked to anybody. Yeah, but uh, it's it's looking like January, uh, maybe end of January, February is, is when we'll first go out. I think we're gonna start in the states which is gonna be awesome. And like the live show is gonna be amazing from like the LED walls and just all these different ideas that I have so far. Um, I'm excited, yeah, we're gonna be going to Europe and Germany and here and there and Amsterdam, blah, 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 all these different places. So I'm excited, um, it's amazing, you know, and when, and when I went there last time to Europe, um, I was so inspired that I, I did this record on the album called Metropolis where I talk about uh, traveling over the years and where music has taken me. So I'm excited to do it again because who knows what else. Right. Well, now you're even bigger, so you have more fans yeah, and stuff. Who are, you, who are you touring with? Can you say them? Um, you know, I don't know as of now. Obviously, I'll, I'll be headlining, right. you know, but um, I, I don't know. I, I, got some, I got some good homies and it's going to be hard to pick because right. somebody's going to be pissed yeah. off, but it's all good. You, you, you sacrifice a lot in balance. How important is balance to you and how important is Family, and I know you've been through rough with family and yeah, your mom yeah, yeah, yeah. and your dad, but how important is those uh, well, things to you? Yeah, balance is everything, the yin and the yang. I am literally black and white, the yin and yang of human, humanity. So, um, family is family is everything, but I think not how people think, oh, blood or this or that. Like, unfortunately, I've had my own blood do horrible things to me that could have messed me up, you know, mentally and growing up and this and that. And it's like, me and my mother, we don't we don't really have a relationship. I left home when I was 17, got two jobs because she was mentally unstable, and um, she didn't deserve to be in my life the way that she was treating me. But you know, my godmother, my honorary godmother that I ended up meeting and, and calling her that, was there to teach me things and how to be a good young man. And so for me, my family is the people that I wake up to every single day. Uh, you know, my, some of my brothers back home, my sisters, like like we have good relationships and. And yeah, it's, it's very important to right. remember where you come from. Like it's it's weird. It's it, you gotta remember, you gotta Keeps remember. Keeps you grounded. You yes. Well, um, success. What is success to you? Um, success is happiness. As wow. Long, as long as you're happy. Wow. Yeah, I thought success was success. money and a house yeah. and cars. I learned the hard way. You know what? I lost my mother, and I say this a lot of times. It's repetitive. I just did an interview with Fifty Dot Com with Jack Thriller, and now I made him really think about his mom a lot. And I understand your mom put you some things, but. Without that woman, you wouldn't be here. And yeah. obviously, with your, your dad having the sex with her, but at the end of the day, I tell people this all the time, man, to keep it real with you. I lost my mother three years ago. Mm -hmm. I go to New York a lot to the cemetery. I say, I, I regret not giving you a grandchildren, mm -hmm. grandchild, and I miss my mom. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like, if you can mend that eventually, it shouldn't have to be about money and stuff, just mend it one day and have a conversation, that'd be the biggest blessing, because we only have one mom. I know, I would love to, but the crazy thing about that is, my, my it's weird. Cause like my mother was not a mother. Like, a lot like of mothers are out there having kids and not mothers. Yeah, exactly. So it's so difficult because 
it's like I don't want to play the because I understand I'm sure you had a great relationship but unfortunately I didn't I didn't have that so for me it's like like I'm not the dude that'll be like oh okay all right everybody fine right. to make everybody happy all right I'll call my mom once right. once a week and I'm like yeah what's up mom and she's talking about the same shit and I'm not even listening or paying attention right. if I have a relationship with somebody I give them my all I respect I that. give them every single thing and if that person doesn't deserve that for me then I'm sorry, it's unfortunate. So I gotta remember that there's good people in my life that deserve to be there and I give them my everything. Yo, what's up? This is Logic and you're live with Steve LaBelle.